Hey, hey, what's up you guys? Look at the Canadian geese out there. Can you see them? Oh, there they go. There they go. <laughs> anyway, so we harvested about 50 acres between this farm and the second farm that we went to yesterday. And this morning we got to get this grain cart moved to the next farm. We got the bush hog and the combine moved yesterday. So finally we have arrived. So it will be convenient to get this moved this morning and Dan can bring me back to get the little truck. Let's see, yeah, I'm gonna have to fuel up before I leave. Only got a little less than half a tank. All right, so now is the proper time to fold the auger down. <laughs> yeah, if you saw the video yesterday, you know what happened. I'm not even gonna tell you. You gotta watch the video. <laughs> mm. Danny got it freezing up in there. Got the windows all fogged up from the air conditioner. <laughs> He's got to haul that load first thing this morning. I had to do it. Oh yeah, and Ricky, I know that's a grade eight boat, but since it's only a 5.16, it's so small, it'll be all right in there. It'll break easily still. <laughs> Man, I tell you what, it's already humid out. It's like 79 degrees and the humidity is 90%, you guys. I'm sweating from just fueling up and brushing off the windows with the brush. Wow, man. And it's only 7.32 this morning. <laughs> but anyway, this is going to be a nice little hop and skip to the next farm. So we're going to see how long it takes. It's 7.33 right now. And we'll see what time it is when we get there. Oh, and y'all do know I'm gonna be checking in from time to time on the way, right? <laughs> I tell you, yesterday when I was taking that 7810, it only does 19.6 miles an hour. But in here, we could do about 26. It seemed like it took me forever to get there. So this should be a little bit quicker. This farmer's soybeans are looking good out there. Nice and tall and green that's one of our corn fields that we'll have to come back to on the way back over here it's the farmer rudy was cleaning up the foundation with the backhoe and i pulled up a lot of big stumps around the woods <laughs> when i was ripping and then right here is one of the new farms that we're farming this year Remember I had to cultivate it, it was real bumpy out there, man. And so we've been traveling for already about 18 minutes. Slap swamp. Look how dry it is out there. Man. Telling you guys, man, we got record low water levels in a lot of places here in North Carolina because of a lack of rain. I had saw the alligator right there. All right, we got to jump on the highway for a split second. We going ahead. We are going ahead before that traffic comes. All right, you guys. So we have made it to this farm. And actually here at this farm, this is where I showed you guys how the deer had bit the tops out and also a lot of it drowned when it was younger. 
and then it got dry on it later on in its growing days so a lot of this corn out here is short you guys and you remember i was telling you that dan said that the bushels per acre probably was gonna be low well i guess we're gonna see matter of fact he bush hogged a lot of it because it was full of weeds and we need somewhere to park so we have arrived he should be here in a second look like he did some bush hogging this morning Oh yeah, and I was talking so much when I pulled in, I forgot to <laughs> check out the time, but I looked back at the video. It was 8.05 when we pulled in and we had left at what, 7.32? So it was 33 minute trip over here. While we're waiting on Dan to get here, let's uh, look at this corn over here. And this area right here is usually a dry spot and there's some clay right there too, which is why it was so bad but uh look at all the weeds in here this is what happens when the corn doesn't get tall enough to shade out the weeds the weeds grow in between here wow yeah this this uh oh man oh this this is sad right here and the bugs oh my goodness you guys look at this look at this ear man look at this ear my whole hand swallows it up. I mean, that one ain't much better. And then this one right here, it's just... <laughs> wow. Oh, Dan is over there. Okay. I guess we gotta head on back to the shop. Alright you guys, so I'm in the 7610 now, got the little boy sprayer here, I left the shop at 938, I want to see how long it's going to take to get to the farm where Dan is picking at. These fellas been working on the railroad tracks, it looks like they was doing some welding earlier. Alright, interesting. Alrighty, you guys, we have arrived. Dan has started. And it's 1020. I'll have to do the math in a second. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure you guys are wondering, well, why have I brought the sprayer over here? Well, I was telling you about the weeds out there and how that the corn might not pick too good if Dan doesn't need me to run the grain cart to keep the hopper bottom trucks loaded because we're going to use the hopper bottom trucks today instead of the small grain truck since we're so far away then in between me mowing and him picking I can get some of this spray so that it doesn't get out of hand but we'll have to see how things go as he gets it picked but I'm gonna have to jump in the bush hog first thing and mow some places for the trucks. So you guys, it almost feels like the clutch is slipping on this bush hog. It's not mowing right. I had to ask Dan, what did you do to my bush hog? Cause it wasn't mowing like this when I was using it yesterday. But uh, oh yeah, it took us what, about 42 minutes to get over here. That's about a nine minute difference. That 7610, it only goes about 19 miles an hour too. That's why I had wanted to check it. But anyway, yeah, I got to figure out what's going on with this bush hog, you guys. So I'll have to check back in a little later. All right, you guys, so I'm eating my chicken salad. You want some? Here, let me see if I can feed you. <laughs> but anyway, I was talking with Danny and Oh, why am I trying to eat with food in my mouth? He's about to unload on the truck over there. I was talking to him about the bush hog. We think we need some blades on it, which is a part of the reason why I wasn't cutting right. I also tightened up the clutch plates back there. They were a little bit loose, but we got to get that mold anyhow. I'm gonna finish up my chicken salad and 
I'll check back in when I start mowing down there. I guess this means once I get the mowing done, I'll definitely have time to spray these fields because they won't need me to run the grain cart. Yeah, that took absolutely too long for him to get a hopper on that combine. And the crazy thing is, I've only made one pass with this bush hog. That's how slow I'm going, because it's not cutting good. So today is a little different from yesterday, you guys. So obviously the clutch is gone because it started smoking on me and it ain't cutting worth a poop now. So. We got to figure out something else here. Oh boy, what a day already. All right, you guys, so I'm gonna have to take this PTO shaft off and take apart the clutches there so that we can see if the dealership has some that we need. But it's so hot out here, I'm not gonna put you on the headband. I'm just gonna go ahead and take it apart and we'll look at it after I get it apart. Got the whole shaft taken off there from the gearbox. The clutch plates are in there, so we gotta get this separated. All right, so this is gonna help me to remember how this goes together. That little piece of metal right there, I stuck it back in there. So I guess that's a clutch plate there. Then you got that piece of metal. I don't know the proper terminology. I know some people call it fibers or something. I don't know. But anyway, then we got that clutch plate. Then that piece of metal there. Looks like another clutch plate. Or is that called a fiber? I don't know. Oh, that's what I'm calling it. I'm calling it a clutch plate. <laughs> Might be the fiber though. Come to think about it, when I, when I work on my four-wheeler, I think that is called the fibers. I don't know. Anyway. I'm just getting a visual and we got that piece of metal there and then that fiber or clutch plate and then that piece of metal there okay all right we're heading to town Dan is still motoring along over there it's picking pretty pitifully you guys I think he's only picked probably about let's see three oh he's only picked probably about five hoppers out of those two fields there man wow all right you guys we have arrived I'm gonna go in here and see if they got what i need so you guys i've been here for about an hour and maybe about 20 minutes they've been looking for parts for us well they didn't have it but they called another dealership in Lawrence, South Carolina. So we got to take a road trip, you guys. <laughs> Hopefully we won't end up in Florida. <laughs> wow, you guys, I've actually been here an hour and 35 minutes. I just looked at the last clip from when we pulled up, man. But anyway, so where we have to go is about a 40 minute ride. So yeah. <laughs> We're going to see how that works out, okay? We are in South Carolina, you guys. Welcome to South Carolina. <laughs> we got about 18 more minutes of travel. You guys, we going to Myrtle Beach. We going to the beach, you guys. <laughs> Alrighty, you guys. We have arrived guess I'll pull up over here never been here before all right you guys so they only had seven but we only need four we was gonna get an extra set so this is what the new clutch disc looks like be heading on I guess back to the field those soybeans are nice and tall there I've seen a lot of places on the way over here though man they need some rain over here too you guys man anyway we're gonna get back on the road all right you guys we have made it back i'm gonna see if i can get these 
clutch disc put on. It's 95 degrees, so it's sort of smoky out here. Looks like Jack is here. He's been hauling for us. He's probably riding with Dan. Woo, I don't miss this heat. I can ride all day, man. Put me back on the road. <laughs> oh man, so I'm gonna have to look at my video to remember how to put that joker back together. Uh, let me, before I start working on it, show you a comparison of the two. Yep. All right, you guys, I will check back in. Thank God for the cab, it's blocking the sun. Whoa, man, anyway, so I got it sandwiched together the way that it's supposed to go. Next, I gotta get it assembled onto that end of the PTO shaft. So now we gotta put the springs on, just like this right here, and they have lock nuts, and when you put them on and tighten them, you want to tighten them evenly all the way around to make sure that it's clamping down on those plates evenly and it's not one side tighter than the other so i'm gonna get that done now you guys all right you guys i got them tightened down since i don't have a torque wrench what i did was i snugged it up with the ratchet there instead of the gun to what felt pretty snug and i tried to make sure i see at least four threads showing on the bolt there and i guess i'm gonna get it put back on the bush hog now and we'll see how it does i actually had to go get a load from dan i'll save that action for tomorrow <laughs> all right you guys so i got it on connected there at the gearbox and on the pto on the tractor but dan just called and said he needs me to go and pick up another load that'll top jack off so I'm gonna go grab that load. And like I said earlier, tomorrow we'll get some of this kind of action. I gotta save something, right? <laughs> my, 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 it do feel nice in here though. Had this joker running so it can be cool for when I have to go get the load. But anyway, okay, I'll check back in whenever we go try out the bush hog. Woo, it's an oven in here, man. Wow. I'm not gonna put the cover on yet until we know that it's just right. I'm gonna come back down here to these heavy weeds. We'll try it right here. All right, here goes. Nothing. Let me gear down, put it in B. Catching a nice glare, ain't you? Let me turn this way. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. So far, so good. It's cutting it on up. We're struggling earlier, man. It's ridiculous. All right, I'm gonna head down to corn rolls now. With some nice speed. You guys, I believe that was our problem. The clutch discs were worn. We do need some new blades too. But that right there is more like it. All right, you guys, so I've been mowing a little bit and it's still doing a good job there, kicking it out. See them big old wads earlier, them wads wouldn't kick out like that because it was slipping. It was just hanging up under the bush hog and then when it would catch, it would really rumble and jumble. But anyway, we got it, you guys. Thank the Lord. So, all right, you guys, I'm gonna get ready and wrap this video on up. The corn's still 
isn't picking good, but we're thankful for what it's doing. Dan last told me it was at like 60 acres per bushel, so yeah, that's pretty bad. But even in the midst of that, man, we thank God that there is a little bit out here. I hope that you guys have enjoyed watching on today. Make sure you smash that like button for us. Throw a comment in the comment section. Let me know what's on your mind. Hey, share these videos. Let's grow the channel a little bit. How about that? <laughs> Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. You guys stay blessed. You guys keep encouraged. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. Jack finally woke up and is off. <laughs> he was sleeping in sleeper, you guys. <laughs>